I've had you on an episode, but we've not done it in the truck. Yeah, you're which in is kind of weird. Yeah. Well, this time I have my shirt on. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, I have to say this. I told her I would say this. There was an actual request from one of the show's fans that, ooh, Cody's going to be on there again. Is he going to have his shirt off? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> so there was a quest that you do this shirtless. <laughs> well, it might be a little awkward, but yeah. <laughs> you no, know, we gotta do what the fans want. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, uh, you you made some some fans with your with your your tan muscles rowing oh, that nice. rowing that raft. <laughs> yeah. For close to 40 years now, people in the thousands have flocked to the Animas River in Farmington, New Mexico every spring for one of our most favorite events, except for the last two years. Riverfest is back! Because of lockdowns, Riverfest went missing in 2020 and 2021. It was replaced last year by a new event, Animus River Jam. That event's here to stay, but will move to the fall, because Riverfest is back! Since humans have walked this planet, rivers have played a crucial role in our history, and Farmington's no exception. We depend on our rivers for all of our water supply. They quite literally bring us life. The River Reach Foundation is an organization absolutely dedicated to the protection, promotion, and enhancement of our local river corridors. And one way they do that is by hosting Riverfest every Memorial Day weekend. The event brings visitors to Farmington's rivers from across the region and beyond. The state of New Mexico recognizes Riverfest as one of the events vital to the state's tourism. If you've never been, this is year to start. It's going to be bigger and better than ever. There's a mystery with this ride that's tough to put your finger on. We'll have a guest along for the ride with Debbie Braff and Cody Dudgeon. I wonder if you'll be able to spot him. Hopefully, my driving won't ruffle his feathers. He's sitting right behind me. I might have to duck. Want to see how it goes? Come along for the ride in Ken's Think Tank. Ken's Think Tank is made possible by the following sponsors. Do you need HVAC services or a tankless water heater? Four States Equipment. Whether it's residential or commercial, Four States Equipment has it all. Parts and equipment, sales and service. From restaurant equipment to heating and air conditioning, visit fourstatesequipment.com. Ken Collins Marketing. It's simple. We help small business owners get more customers. Show our sponsors some love. If you're watching the video, show us some love by smashing the like button. And remember, the views and opinions expressed on Ken's Think Tank do not necessarily reflect those of our sponsors. All right, so we have Cody Dudgeon and Debbie Breath. Right. Cool. So you guys are both on the board for Riverfest. And for the River Reach Foundation. And, right, right. Right. Well, yeah, so you're on the board for River Reach Foundation. Is there a separate board for River It's Fest? not a board, it's an organizing committee. I got you. And we both take part in that as well. And and River Fest is a River Reach Foundation event. Yes. Is, is what that is. So yeah. Right. Cool. And River Fest is coming up. So when this airs, um, it will be at the end of the month. Okay, um, in May, right? So it's the, yes. end of the, end of the end of May. It's always uh, on like the Memorial Day weekend. That's correct. Cool. And so tell me about Riverfest. Well, Riverfest is our annual event that we do for a fundraiser for River Reach Foundation. It includes live music. Um, we do our kickoff on Friday evening at 530. And then it goes through Saturday and Sunday with live music and food vendors and a bunch of other events. Um, Debbie here does stuff with all of our sponsors and vendors and she makes sure that everybody's getting their uh, part of the information ready to go and part of the event ready to go along with people like me who I organize a couple of specific events. Um, this year I am doing a river raft parade um, the River Raft Parade is a costume contest yeah. that we're going to float from Animus Park, uh, which is right there by the Animal Shelter, down to the Miller Street Bridge. 
those uh, particular that particular float is only about a mile and a half about and, and uh, we're trying to get the community to come out anybody that's a river rafter or stand-up paddleboarder kayaker etc to come out wear a costume have some fun and uh, just get out on the river that event is on Sunday at 11 a.m. And then I also have a group of National Honor Society kids that I work with because I'm also a teacher that they put on a uh, recycled fashion show. Um, there are many other events out there, including the wiener dog race. Debbie, how many years has that been going on? Oh, I don't know. I would say probably around 15 years. Um, and the wiener dog race is, is if if people are out there and have wiener dogs, they, sh they should uh, get their dogs entered into that because it doesn't take any skill. Uh, in fact, most of the wiener dogs don't have a clue what they're out there for. <laughs> right. They put them in boxes, right. they open the gates, and the, the owners at the other end of the finish line uh, patting the ground and waving their favorite toy, and the idea is for the dog to run across to their owner. But usually what they do is they chase each other, <laughs> uh, they stop and pee, they, they do other things, and it's quite a crowd pleaser. Yeah, it's and, pretty hilarious. Yeah, it is fun. and and. Uh, they have wiener dog merchandise for sale as well, so it's a uh, it's a lot of fun. That's awesome. Um, th and that's our start off event in the in the morning on Saturday morning. It starts at 11, so people are going to register their dogs. That starts at 9:30, and um, it's just a lot of fun. And then um, actually before the event even starts, we have some some uh, what would you call it? Maybe physical fitness items. We have um, the. Farmington Rec Center has a, a race every year. It's like a 10K, 5K, two-mile fun run. Okay. And um, people would register at the Farmington Rec Center for that. They start at 8 o'clock. And at 9 o'clock, there's a yoga session uh, near the little pavilion that blew a gazebo. Okay. And, uh, and then at 10 o'clock, I think there's going to be, I think Defined Fitness is going to do a workout session. And uh, so any of the information on any of these events, you can get on our website, which is riverfestnewmexico.com. And it's yeah. got tabs for every one of these events. Um, Cody was talking about, uh, you know, Sunday events as well. Uh, Saturday afternoon from 2.30 to 4, um, we have Joe Tohani and Junior in the White Mountain Apache uh, Crown Dancers. And that's, that's usually our biggest crowd draw. Uh, draws in probably, well, I would guess, maybe thousands of people. Really? Yeah, and that's at the Little Pavilion and uh, where, where the music takes place uh, at Berg Park. And, and then on Sunday, uh, the One Nation Gord, Gord Dance Club, I want to get their name right, um, sponsors a Gord Dance at the Veterans Memorial Plaza. Right. And that goes on all day Sunday. Um, and like Cody mentioned, there's music at, at both Rocky Reach Terrace, which is down by the rapids, or Rocky Reach Landing, and River Reach Terrace, which is what w most people call Berg Park. Right. So there's going to be all kinds of stuff going on. Arts and crafts vending, vendors, uh, other kinds of vendors, um, children's amusements like bouncy houses and things like yeah. that. Yeah. There's, there's no shortage of things to do at Riverfest. I, I was I was depositing some money from, I'm the treasurer for the foundation. I was depositing some money for the events the other day. And uh, there was a girl at the bank that told me, that she was asking me about it because I had all these deposits. And she said um, that she had grown up here in Farmington. She'd never been to Riverfest and I almost <laughs> fell over. <laughs> I was like, really? Yeah. <laughs> never? So yeah. I told her she needed to come. It's just fun. There's just something for everybody. Yeah, it's a huge event. There's a lot of stuff going on at that thing. Yeah, for days. And, you know, Cody Cody hasn't mentioned, uh, really, one of the most fun things is to go rafting. Cody might know something about that. I mean, it's a whole celebration on the river. Yep, it's all about the river. Of the river and for the river. Yeah, and so the, uh, the rafting is being done by the Desert River Guides Raft Company. Cody, you own, with your wife, you own De Desert River Guides. And so we will be offering $20 person raft rides for all ages, any age group. And we're gonna have a pop-up and a table set up right there at the put-in. The put-in is by the animal shelter, um, well, just below the animal shelter at the river. And so we'll have our little uh, setup there at the river. 
and we'll be going down about once every hour um, doing our best to make as many laps as possible and so we'll have people just meet us right there and we'll get them their life jackets and a paddle and a raft to sit on and take them downstream it's Sweet. a it's a real fun class two to class low class three run that's right. really family friendly we can take kids as uh, small as 35 pounds usually about five years of age um, and all the way to your great grandma if she wants to go yeah and I mean there is a there is a, a, a rapids a rapids section that's that's been installed in a portion of that right that that um, there are different ways to navigate so you can kind of navigate it um, cool and easy or you can make it a little bit more exciting if you know yeah absolutely there's uh, that rapid was actually paid for and made uh, what, about 15 or so years ago Debbie about 20 20 now and uh, the River Reach Foundation was directly involved with replacing that it had been a well actually it, it was directly involved with getting it put there in the first place right and then it periodically it has been um, repaired because the the water undercuts it right and the river reach is usually a driving force in, in yeah in making sure that gets done yeah and so some of those funds that we make off of uh, doing river fest go to maintaining the river protecting it enhancing it where it needs to be enhanced and restoring it when absolutely possible. That rapid is really a lot of fun. It's a couple of big splashes, and then yeah. there are several more little splashy waves down lower that uh, have been recently put together as fish weirs that are they're really fun too. So it's about a 45 minute trip on the water, and it's just a great time. And we're excited this year that we have a local business that is providing the raft service in the yeah. past, in the last yeah. many years, we've had to bring in a company from Durango. Right. Uh, now we got our own homegrown people doing it. Yeah, and I've I've been on um, on a version of, of one of those floats because I had Cody on the show and we went down on a raft and I I had actually um, it's it's really neat. You forget, you know, um, seeing the city from the point of view of the river is so completely different of what you view as what we have going on around here. You know, the, you know the rivers are there. You drive over them a couple times, you drive next to them a couple times, and you see that the rivers are there, and you think, yeah, I know what the river looks like, and you don't. <laughs> you have no idea. It's true. Yeah, it's really amazing. Yeah, it's a, a beautiful thing to be able to experience, and we're able to now do it uh, all summer long instead of just having the companies from Durango come down and only have rafting during Riverfest. Right. So it's it's been pretty cool to be able to offer that and also be a team a teammate and a partner with the River Reach Foundation for Riverfest. I, I'm really excited to be involved with Riverfest in that way as well as with the other uh, levels that I, I am a part of the River Reach Foundation and Riverfest itself. Very cool. And Debbie, you mentioned the website. So this is the first year that um, the Riverfest by itself has its own website. That's correct. I, I suppose I should mention that you designed it, but, <laughs> but it's a great website because uh, it's got all the activities and uh, we're slowly filling in information because we're still, we're right. still planning Riverfest. But um, you can go to that website, riverfestnewmexico.com, all one word. and and uh, it, it tells you the times of events and the types of events and you can just see what fun it is. Yeah. A, a couple events that, that I didn't mention before, there's, a, there's a disc golf going on. Yeah. You can check the tab for information on that. And then on Sunday morning, there's just a fun dog walk called Rover Fest. Um, so, and there's all kinds of other little, little events that yeah. take place. We were selected by New Mexico True the group called Siri uh, as one of 13 events in New Mexico that New Mexico tourism wants to make sure come back after the pandemic right and um, so they've they've worked with us and that was one of the first things that they told us we needed is we needed our own website rather than uh, a web 
you know, just people going to the River Reach Foundation, right. which they're less likely to go to. So I posted on January like 4th or 10th or somewhere, first week of January, I posted that Riverfest was coming back on our on our um, Facebook page, just our Facebook page. Right. It's had 11,000, uh, it's reached 11,000 people already. Yeah. And so people are really uh, dying to get back to things, particularly Riverfest. I think people have missed Riverfest. Yeah, and, uh, it's a so, really cool, super, I mean, it's just super fun event, and it's been missing for the last two years, right? Yeah. So we, you know, we, we want to drive as many people as we can to our website to get all that information. Um, it'll, it'll eventually have uh, the total event schedules, and it'll have, uh, like, the music schedules and who the music groups are. We've, we've got music set up, and that, of course, is always... Um, it's always subject to change <laughs> at the last minute or, or whatever. But we have a lot of the a lot of the popular groups um, from the area, uh, like the Zia Chicks, and um, right. Let me read some of these off: the Sandstoners, the Sean Arrington Blues Band, Breezin, uh, Joker's Wild, Funkified, uh, Ddat, uh, Black Velvet, a group called Tumbling Dice. And that, that's all on Saturday. On Sunday, we've got the Zio Chicks, Julie and the Boys, the Brant Leaper Band, uh, Magic Ham. I'm going to talk about them in a second. And then something called Rico Jones and Lee Yacht Collective. And they're from New York. Really? Yeah. And the Pete Giuliani Band, James Kirk Band, and closing it out uh, at uh, Rocky Reach Landing uh, on Sunday night is, or Sunday afternoon is Wild Country. Um, but Friday we have a kickoff concert. We'll have the food vendors in place, the beer and wine. Um, most of our other kind of vendors won't be set up yet. But right. but uh, we have an opening kickoff at the Little Pavilion. When we had Animus River Jam last year, which uh -huh. was kind of like a, a mini river fest, right. one of the groups that came out of nowhere that apparently was the huge crowd pleaser was a group called Magic Ham. And it's teenagers. And they do, really? yeah, they do rock and roll, and apparently they brought the crowd down. Really? Yeah, and I missed them. Oh man. I, Yeah, uh, but th apparently they were the the you know the big surprise of that. So they're actually doing the first set of the kickoff on Friday night. Uh, the group called Magic Ham, and then they're followed by uh, just happens to be their father, uh, Tim Sullivan, and Tim Sullivan is a very well known musician uh, from. Uh, Durango. Yeah. He does every Tuesday night at the uh, Diamond Bell. Uh, sometimes he works with the Bardi Wranglers. Right. And he's a great musician. Yeah. And, it, and, and uh, although he's kind of country western, he, he can do all kinds of music. He is great. Yeah. And so he's, you know, he'll follow Magic Ham, which is his kids, and, uh, and do a longer concert there okay. Friday night. So that's our opening. Grab a beer, grab a turkey leg and a lawn chair and come out and enjoy <laughs> the opening night. You mentioned New Mexico True was was taking an interest. In, so basically what's what's going on is is um, the state is taking an interest in this event um, because yeah. this not, not only us, the state is also making a lot of efforts in outdoor recreation and tourism yes. and things like that. And this is a key, one of those key events for the state. Yeah. The groundwater that, f that flows in New Mexico, most of it flows through here. 65%. 65%. Okay. Of all groundwater in New Mexico. Of, for the entire state. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, the San Juan is actually one of the larger tributaries to the Colorado River. Right. Um, it flows through here. Um, the Animus River, of course, is a tributary to the San Juan. And the San Juan flows out to uh, Utah and then sort of zigzags its way along the Utah-Arizona border until it reaches Lake Powell. Right. Um, where it dumps a, one of the largest sediment loads of the Colorado River as well right there into the lake. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. We're so dependent in this area on on that water flow. I mean, that's where we get our water. We don't get rainfall. We get it from the river. Right, and that's all coming from the snowpack out of right. the southern San Juans. Right. So, so both the Animus and the San Juan, um, we kind of rely on that. Well, and, and switching gears a little bit from Riverfest to just outdoor recreation. Yeah. Um, that's one of the advantages Cody's company has over, say, Durango. Um, 
when the water lowers on the animus as summer comes in, right? Uh, there's still water on the San Juan. Yeah. They have to keep the the they have to let water out of the dam right. to keep fish habitat, and so there's a, an opportunity to raft all summer long. Yeah. Uh, and into the fall here because we have both the animus and the San Juan. Right. Yeah, the uh, the minimum flows on the San Juan River below the confluence with the Animus is 500 cubic feet per second, which isn't a whole lot of water, but it's enough to float on top of. Sure. And they're protecting a fish called the Razorback Sucker. Yeah. And it has, it has a natural habitat between the confluence all the way down into Lake Powell, actually. Yeah, so, I got to be there once uh, when they were releasing releasing them into the river. And uh, that was really neat. We've had years where there was no water in the animus. You could, you know, you could walk across it. Yeah. And then we've had years where the the whole park was flooded, except for River Reach Terrace. We had to have, we had to move on the Tuesday before the Friday opening. We had to move every activity uh, to a different location. Right. Yeah, because of the flooding. Right. And so, you know, it's an outdoor event, and you just never know. Uh, what's going to happen it can rain right. it can blow it can a uh, little bit of snow right uh it's it's an adventure i think our snowfall is such that it probably is not going to flood this year so yeah um, yeah but looking you, at snowpacks we should be good yeah but but again that's that's uh that's a it, it's dependent upon when it's warm you know, right. so it could be cold and cold and cold, and then all of a sudden they get a big warm snap, <laughs> right. and it comes all right. down at once, and then it's gone. And so it's you know it's a vast, wild, yeah. it's a wild river. That's what's cool right. about the Animus. It's a wild river. It's not dammed. Yeah, it's diverted a little bit, but it's not sure. dammed. Sure. And um, you just you get what you get. Yeah. As they say to the kindergartners, you get what you get, and you don't pitch a fit. <laughs> so, uh, for at least the past one or two years or maybe more you, you, you were doing um, a river raft race this year I noticed it changed from race to so like a, a parade, parade and costume, a costume contest. contest so I just I just I'm gonna make some bets on on maybe percentages I'm gonna say that at least 20 percent maybe 25 percent of the costumes on there are going to be pirates. <laughs> I mean, I think you're right. There's definitely a good amount of pirates that end up as riot, rafting uh, costumes. Yeah. Although we also get uh, fuzzy unicorns and, nice. <laughs> and ducks. Um, I don't know. I've been involved with a couple of uh, raft parades uh, throughout the country. So a couple up in Montana, a couple in uh, Colorado, and it's. People come up with some wild ideas on, on how to put a costume over a life jacket. Yeah. And so it's it's a lot of fun to see what people do. And the reason we changed from a race is it's that kind of makes it more exclusive, right? It pushes certain it groups of people out. Yeah. Where as a costume contest and rap parade that is open to all of the public um, and it's just for fun yeah. is, is a lot more inclusive. And I think that's what Riverfest is all about is finding ways to include people right. at the river and to bring them into an understanding of this valuable and beautiful resource we have in Farmington. Tune in next episode for the exciting conclusion to my interview with Debbie Braff and Cody Dudgeon. Will Cody keep his shirt on? Will the duck finally speak up? Will Ken roll the window down allowing the duck to fly free? Next time on Ken's Think Tank. Ken's Think Tank is made possible with help from these fine sponsors. Basin Home Health and Hospice, 